Hey, what's going on YouTube? Hope everyone's having an excellent day. Let's get to the videos. In 2021, if you leave something behind, somebody's gonna find it. Hides it in the tree. I mean, this is fascinating. Either that or, I mean, this guy is a pro when it comes to editing and special effects. But what's, what, what makes this crazy, I mean, you can still see nobody in the background. But let's go to the next clips here. People are actually sharing that they found his keychain with the coordinates that he gave them. Now, this person is also showing that the area that he was in is a populated area. You can see people walking their dogs. You can see people jogging, having picnics, and there it is. There's the keychain right there. He put a note there for, for them. This guy is in, is in shock. Here's another one right here. Guy found it. I mean, did he go out early in the morning when nobody was around and film these shots right before he posted the video? I, I don't know. I don't know. That's what makes it so. I Considering how good AI video editing is nowadays, it's possible that he could easily just take all of the people out of the, the video. Or like the other guy said, it could have just been done early in the morning. So who knows? I'll leave it up to you guys. I know people are hyped about the solar eclipse on April 8th, but why is no one talking about what CERN is doing that same day? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, CERN is going to test the world's most powerful particle accelerator during April's solar eclipse. Now, apparently they want to do this because they want to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. Um, CERN, what are you doing? Why are you trying to recreate the Big Bang? And when I say this, I'm not exaggerating. Because recreating the Big Bang is exactly what CERN does. Now, theories have suggested that there are 17 different particle groups, and CERN has confirmed the existence of one of them using its LHC back in 2012. Now, that's exactly how they found the God particle or the Higgs boson particle. Because when the LHC was used, it recreated seconds after the Big Bang. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Higgs boson particle is, it is a fundamental force-carrying particle. This particle gives everything on Earth mass, so without it, we'd have nothing. And this was discovered back in 2012. And now CERN has restarted the LHC with hopes of unraveling more mysteries of the universe, specifically dark matter. Now, they have already began preliminary testing by sending billions of protons around the LHC's ring of superconducting magnets to boost their energy and ensure the $4 billion machine was in working condition. And tomorrow, during the solar eclipse, CERN will shoot down protons down a 17-mile-long tunnel at nearly the speed of light to recreate conditions a second after the Big Bang. Wow, great idea. Even Stephen Hawking himself warned about using this machine. It was just 10 years ago he said that this machine could become unstable and create black holes which just suck up everything in existence. Now he also said not to worry too much because they would need a stronger hydraulic lighter. But remember, he said this 10 years ago. This is 2024 now. They built a bigger, stronger hydraulic lighter and they're testing it tomorrow. We are so cooked. But yeah, what do you guys think of this? Do you think we're screwed tomorrow? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like... I know this video is like a week old, but I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's been a lot of weird stuff. That's been on the, uh, there's been a lot of weird stuff people have captured since this uh, eclipse. So I just wanted to show this vi uh, video again, just so you know what happened. That explains all the weird stuff that's going on. The entire country was just gaslit. Let me explain. Let me start by saying the ones on here that are attacking the people who had predictions for the 8th. I would say y'all are way, way worse than they are. At least they use logic rationality in their brain we're gonna go through a lot of stuff notice his eclipse thing though 33.3 million at 33,000 reshares like i said in my videos it was a time to repent and y'all failed but what bothers me the most is the massive gaslighting done by the people who run america the news literally said that there's going to be an earthquake on the 8th and not just this, but Saturday Night Live ran a skit about an earthquake being on the 8th. And it's not over yet because we've got the eclipse earthquake coming up on Monday. As Deborah Ross was telling us, it's going to be a transformative event. Let's see what the experience. The news was the one telling you to get food, gas, National Guard was going to be there, and all this other stuff. ...us for an earthquake. Check out SNL last night. I'm <laughs> Y'all remember this? Okay, so we've all been talking about the eclipse happening on April 8th, right? 
But does anybody remember in 2017 when they said that a eclipse like this would not happen again in our lifetime? Like, I can't remember what the, the years were, but tell me I'm not the only one that remembers this. And on top of all of this, we had NASA warning people not to take videos on their phone camera. I wonder why. Wait, I've seen a lot of things on here. <laughs> That's not the devil's comment. It was green. And there are people who recorded multiple portals in the sky. And of course, we had these black blurs flying through the screens, and people said, oh no, there are airplanes. Here's the problem. If there's an airplane, you would only see it in your direct area. People all across the world or all across the United States would not see a plane in front of the sun by your area. Just you would. Here's a different one in a completely different state. And I saw a video that had two of them going by. They were everywhere. Then Research the Earth put this out a day or two or a day before the eclipse. Huh. I said in every single one of my videos and lives that nothing would happen on the 8th. Because historically, we see from the evidence that nothing ever happens right when it happens. 1811 is three months later. The earthquakes are four months. But since y'all are grouping everybody together, especially the ones that just gave you real factual historical evidence, I'm gonna stand up for them and say, y'all are doomed. You will follow the masses wherever they go, even when it's off a cliff. Taiwan, China, a different place in China, Indonesia, and another six in Indonesia. There's been big earthquakes all day, and guess what? It's not slowing down. And for the people poking the Christians or even poking at God for saying it's the end times, just know it's God himself that draws in the sky, puts the sun, the moon, the stars, and the wandering stars in the sky, and that's exactly who you're poking at. Y'all better repent. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repent. What he said about um, the news outcast was telling everybody to prepare for the <laughs> April the 8th. I actually remember that vividly like like two months ago they were talking about that i didn't know it was like an earthquake or anything like that but they were saying that yeah you guys need to prepare because xyz it's pretty uh interesting that um all that stuff happened around the solar eclipse of the day afterwards this video make sure you share this with friends and give me a follow up What's the saying? We're in a, uh, it's a big club and we're not in it. Or well, I would never want to be in the club. And also, I feel like a lot of the hand gestures they making, they either know exactly what they mean or they didn't know what they mean. They saw somebody else doing it, they thought it was cool. Either way, it's not cool. Uh, we have all of these other programs that are developing technology at the same time and are developing much, much more advanced technologies. So advanced, in fact, that there are ET races that come here to trade for our technology. Corey Good is the one insider I found whose testimony ties all of these different threads together. 
I've heard Corey have knowledge of something that each of the different other insiders I've spoken to had said to me in the past. Nobody else had ever done that before. And that was fascinating because I had not put this information online. The information was proprietary. It was things that I'd heard over the course of conversations that could have gone on for many, many dozens of hours over time, spreading across about 20 years worth of my own past history. I think they chose children for these MyLab programs in several different ways. They had to profile them. They definitely used standardized testing and a few other ways to identify whether they had a skill or a, a talent that they needed. Then they would check out their family life. They preferred children from broken homes or from homes that uh, were not uh, harmonious because the children are used to getting smacked around. They're used to stressful environments. And, uh, and, and the parents were not always as attentive as other parents. Therefore, the children were able to handle a lot more stress and the parents uh, may not notice, you know, certain behavior in the kids. Well, I guess you would say a typical day, if there is a typical day in the life of a MyLab, would be your parents dropping you off at school, just like any other day. And except that day, you're pulled aside and told you're gonna go on a field trip. You're in a special education class or a, uh, an accelerated learning class, you're special. You're being taken off campus to go, you know, look at dinosaurs. Well, you are taken, put in a van. Usually a person is driving that is military looking, sometimes in uniform. They would then drive us for a little over an hour to Carswell Air Force Base. We parked inside this hangar that was a motor pool and we walked to the back and there was an elevator and the elevator went down quite a ways. And when we came out, we were underground in a Cold War era type um, bunker. That would then lead us to another set of elevators that would take us down where we would get on underground trams that would, uh, there were trains that would take us over 500 miles per hour anywhere in the world. When we were sent to one of these locations through one of these shuttles, we would then go through, sometimes because of travel time, we would only get 45 minutes of training in, sometimes two, three hours of training in. Then we would go back, be debriefed, and they would give us a chemical through a shot and they would sit us in a chair in front of a movie screen and basically hypnotize us and give us a screen memory of going to a museum and looking at dinosaurs. They would then put us in the same van, drive us back to school, let us out, and uh, as our parents picked us up, we would tell them all about looking at dinosaurs. MKUltra was a program done by the CIA in the 1950s and 60s, and within MKUltra, they experimented with trauma-based Sorry about that video just ending like that. I couldn't find the rest of the video, but I still thought I was fascinated enough to uh, share it on the channel. What the guy saying is very fascinating, especially the e ETs coming to the, the planet to trade with us. And um, about the MK Ultra when he was a kid, but how like, they would have him train him, but really they just drug him. Saying he went so when he, when he when he didn't. That's just crazy. I mean, you really can't trust what the government is doing at all. Especially like certain parts, certain branches of the military. It's just, it's unreal, really.
Did you know that a NASA whistleblower has exposed the truth? What do you guys think that was that was going into the sun that got, um took footage of? I don't know what that could be. Let me know in the comments what you guys think it is. I make fake pictures for NASA. Um, all of my astrophotography is just, um, it's not real. It's 3D art. It's, uh, we put it together in uh, Blender and Photoshop and a whole bunch of other tools. It uh, takes a while, but um, the results, I think, are pretty good and have fooled most of the world. Uh, NASA sends me the files. Um, they'll send me like 3D models, they'll send me like um, computer-generated star backgrounds. They send us all the assets and um, then we can put them all together and uh, generate these uh, images of the universe. They kept paying me money and NASA kept sending me the files so I kept perpetuating their uh, myth about space. You know, none of it's real. And how do you do it exactly? So, so is this uh, widespread? Uh, are there other astrophotographers oh, yeah. doing this? I mean, we're all in on it. Like, um, you know, all the, all the big guys, Christopher Goh, Theory the Gold, Martin Pugh, um, Mark G, um, Galactic Hunter, Chuck, uh, Astro Backyard, you know that guy? Astro Backyard? Yeah, we're all in on it. If what that guy is saying is true, and he's not a like fake actor or anything like that, I wonder if he is still like alive. Because giving that type of information out, I don't know the guy's name. I'll imagine he would uh suddenly um appear. Look. Considering how common it is to spike people drinks in that uh, industry, you wouldn't be surprised if they did uh, drug him. So, so, so think about this. Kanye is in some car. This is the guy. The guy's eating. In the car. This is what really happened. Look whose hands this is holding the food. Happens with Peter, A.V. Kanye. Look, Kanye, who don't, don't, who don't go for none of that bullshit. He's holding the food, the plate, while the other guy is having the time of his life eating out of Kanye hands. What we do on our way to a Vogue event: ribs and Look. French fries. He got the ribs in one hand, the French fries in another. There's something that's. Again, I hate to, to be that person, but then you start thinking about it. Do these millionaires start changing and acting different in the presence of more money? That's what people usually consider. I don't believe in the Illuminati in terms of, oh, there's like 15 niggas here. who No, I believe people compromise their morals and, and codes and and, and um just mere boundaries when it comes to possibly escalating in society and it usually takes people who either run an industry billionaires or something like that but it, it's interesting because the people who we think are rich or wealthy when you see them around the other people who are really rich or wealthy you see unbelievable behavior so you know, it reminds me of, it reminds me if, um, if any of you guys are working like retail or anything like that, and you know how it's you, then it's your manager, then the district manager come and you see how different your store manager come when like their boss come or like when the district manager has to bring the regional manager and not a district manager who's usually like a hole. It's not like super nice. Cause his boss there, that's what this reminds me of when it comes to, um, how people act when they're around somebody who's more successful than them and they want what the person has 99% of the people who are going to probably bend to that person will anyway, because they want what the person has, unless you have like very like strong morals, you're probably going to bend to the will of that person. Also, when it comes to the Illuminati stuff, I do think it's like a group of people that are uh, orchestrating all this stuff. Shows a CD or a disc. 
he immediately draws the geometric shape of an oblate spheroid. We can see how he separates the oblate spheroid with a disc that has a hole in the center. Then, below he draws a circle immediately painted completely black. From this black circle rays come out and three rays pass through the hole in the center. Below he writes, still, one of the possible meanings of this black circle may be the black sun. He draws reliefs on the edge of the hole and writes North Pole. And above this hole inside what would be the celestial vault he draws a star, the polar star of Polaris. He marks two points and connects them in a circle and writes, Equator. He draws two lines that go down from the polar star to the two points, the lines form a triangle. Highlights two of the rays coming out of the black sun and also forms a triangle but vice versa. And he writes, as above so below. It's one of the seven principles of Hermes Trismegistus. It appears on the emerald tablet and then in the Kabbalion. He erases the intersections and draws the sun and moon. and he makes a gesture of rotation. He draws two arrows to show the distance of the moon and the sun. Both are 3,300 miles or 5,310 kilometers away. Then he measures the diameter of the sun and moon, being the same with a diameter of 32 miles or 51 kilometers. He draws continents on the surface and on the other side as well. He points both sides and writes, same. Below he writes summer land. He draws rays coming out of the black sun and writes northern lights. The center of the drawing is equal to the mason symbol, which is a square and a compass. He points out the ray coming out of the black sun toward the moon and then he erases the face of the moon. He makes signs explaining that the sun doesn't light up the moon. Who does it is the black sun. Imagine, hidden in plain sight all along.